Hello, welcome. Take a moment, read this problem, and then we'll discuss how to solve it. They want to know which expression has, be, has been rewritten correctly to form a true statement. So we see a lot of stuff here, a little overwhelming. But what I notice is a common type of problem. And what I'm talking about, let's look at number one. You have x plus 2 squared plus 2 times x plus 2 minus 8. Now, as scary as this looks, um, one common technique is to, is to ask yourself, well, is this quadratic in nature? Is the first term squared? Yes. Is the middle term the square root of the first term? Yes. And is the final term a constant? Yes, it is. So that tells me that I want to try at least substitution. So let's say let u equals x plus 2. And this really helps us see how this thing is quadratic. If we let u equal, equal x plus 2, we write u squared plus 2 times x plus 2. Well, that's just 2 times u minus 8. And then we can factor this thing. We get two, fa two factors that multiply to negative 8 but add to 2. I'm going to say positive 4 and negative 2. And we're done. Just resubstitute the value of u back in. And we get x plus 2 plus 4. And then x plus 2 is u. So x plus 2 minus 2. And that would equal what? x plus 6 times x. And that's exactly what we have in choice 1. Now let's just look at choice 4 to get a sense of what's happening in this problem. Uh, and then I'll say a couple of things about choices uh, 2 and 3. So choice 4, let's just to get practice here, let's look at choice 4. We get x squared minus 4 squared minus 5 times x squared minus 4 minus 6. Well here if we say, and let me just keep this all in red so we don't confuse it with our previous work, let u equal x squared minus 4. That would give us u squared minus 5u minus 6. Sorry, I fixed that. So u squared minus 5u minus 6. Now that factors to two things that, let's see, multiply negative 6 and add to negative 5. And that's u minus 2 and u minus 3. Plug back in what u equals, which is x squared minus 4. So we have x squared minus 4 minus 2. And then we'd have x squared minus 4 minus 3. And that would become x squared minus 6 times x squared minus 7. And OK, cool. It looks like I got the same thing as them. Did I miss something? Let's see. x squared minus 4 squared minus 5 times x squared minus 4 minus 6. Let u equal x squared minus 4. OK. So we have, OK, at u squared minus 5u minus 6. Oop. Negative 2 and negative 3. I made the same mistake they did. Oh, boy. So multiply a negative 6, um, but add a negative 5. So this is interesting. I made the mistake. Good job, Sean, um, that they predicted I would make. Instead, that should be what? It should be u minus um, u minus 6 times u plus 1. Oh, boy. So they got me. Um, here, that would mean that if you resubstitute back in, you'd have x squared minus 4 minus 6, so minus 10, and x squared minus 4, x squared minus 4 plus 1, which is minus 3. That would be correct. Uh, here, negative 2 and negative 3, they multiplied a positive 6, not negative 6. So I made that mistake. So that this is actually not correct. Apparently, we'll call it the Sean choice because I made that mistake. And the other two, I think it's important just to evaluate. Let's look at 2 and 3 real quick so you can get a sense of, you know, if that was correct, what would you do? Because I don't want you to feel like, oh, I can only solve this now if the, if the right answer is right in front of me. So how would you even deal with problems 2 and 3? Well, 2... Uh, let's look at 2 first. 2 is interesting to me because um, what we could do is essentially factor by grouping. And so that's the other type of thing we'll give you is a factor by grouping example. So in the first group, the highest common factor is x squared. And what will be left is x squared plus 4. The second group, the largest common factor is 9y squared. 
And if we factor that out, we'd have be left with x squared minus 4. Okay. Just notice here that if you did keep factoring, you get x squared plus 9y squared. And then multiply that by x squared plus 4 times x squared minus 4. You keep going. x minus 2 plus 2. Oops. That's for the difference of two squares in the last part right here. That's for this part. x squared plus 4, we'll leave that alone. And then x squared plus 9y squared, we also leave alone. And this would be the correct way of factoring it. Notice here, though, what they have done is they made several mistakes. Often when students see x squared plus 9y squared, they might square root both of them. So the square root of x is x squared is x, square root of 9y squared is 3y. And they think that somehow this could be distributed back to equal this right here. These are not the same thing. In other words, x squared plus 9y squared does not equal x plus 3y squared. If you take x plus 3y squared, you'll get squared, you'll get a trinomial. You know, x times x, x times 3y, so on and so forth. It'll build a much bigger term. And also here, x minus 2 squared. Uh, perhaps if students mix these signs up, they could have got that same situation. And then uh, the same kind of thing is, is true for the last one here. You would try factor by grouping. I'll just show you what that looks like real quick. So I'll clear this out. And maybe this is overkill. You're like, I don't know why I need to know all this. Just remember that any of these choices could be correct or incorrect, or they might ask you to fix anything here. So here in choice three, if I factor by grouping, right, x squared is the biggest uh, common factor of the first two terms. And then minus 4y squared is the biggest for the second. I think I've got that. And then put a plus there because negative 4 times plus 12 is negative 12y squared. Here, if we were to factor this out, we get x squared minus 4y squared times um, x plus 3, right? And sorry, x plus 12. Not 12. Why, why did I do that? I apologize. So let me just go back one second here. This would not be plus 12. This would be plus 3. So here that gives us x squared minus 4y squared, right? Negative 4y squared times 3 is, that's negative 12y squared times x plus 3. So you'll notice there are two x plus 3s here, so students might put x plus 3 squared, but here it's just one common binomial we're factoring out. In fact, and then they also just square rooted both terms here, which we know students do a lot, so they put that in the problem. But also, um, if you were to factor this correctly, it would be x minus 2y times x plus 2y. This is the difference of squares times x plus 3, which is not what they gave us. So these are all incorrect. Oh boy, that was a lot to explain, but I really wanted you to see how each of those work. Hope that helped.